What's up guys, Pop Pop 101 here. Today we're gonna to be going over the December 17th small U12 preview and everything associated with it from a modest perspective. So let's get started. First up, do not expect Blade and Sorcerer U12 to be before Christmas or any time in 2022. It'll be likely in early 2023. My guess is either late January or early February. There's still quite a bit of bugs and technical issues that they're trying to work out, but I'm excited. And it does stink that we won't be able to play as soon as I thought, but it is what it is. Probably the greatest part of this new update and this news is all the new hype with the breakables. Now, if we scroll down a bit, notice there are 24 breakable props in game. So if I zoom in, you can literally see this crate right here getting absolutely shattered across this guy's head. If we scroll down a bit more. We can actually WWE style slam guys into tables and just destroy them. Now I've been using Meme Man's Carnage Reborn mod a lot lately, and this kind of reminds me of a version of that. But the fact that we can actually destroy tables and objects now and 24 of them, like come on, that is absolutely insane. And I'm so excited for that because that really does allow for interesting and dynamic fights. There's so many new things and new fighting combinations that we can try. And probably the best part about it, there is damage on things like the broken pots and the broken shards of the weapons that, or items that end up breaking. So even with this little piece right here, we can still stab enemies. And it seems that they added six new tools too. So I'm excited to see all these new high quality weapons that they added. Like, this one seems like it's a giant pickaxe. I don't know why it's so long, but hey, you know, I'm not going to be complaining. Now one thing that I'm not too excited about, but at the same time I am, is this mod manager. There's a couple functions that I want to show you guys. Now to be honest, like Bone Lab, these in-game mods will be host on mod.io. I wish everything was host on Nexus, because that's what we've been using and that's what I'm accustomed to. I really don't like mod.io. But what I will show you guys is look at this in-game mod manager. How cool is this? It filters by the game version. Weapons, armor, spells, everything, the different kinds. If we zoom in, just look at these different mods right here. And all the mods that you currently have downloaded, which it does seem like since there's a trash that you can easily just get rid of them. That is really cool. And if you're not interested in it, you can of course still upload to Nexus. I will be posting the majority of my mods to either Nexus or Patreon still, just while they're in beta. And for certain mods like Dismemberment and all that, I might end up just posting them into mod.io. I don't know yet. The whole point of Nexus mods was to show the most popular and everything, but I also don't really like the way that the mods in mod.io are displayed. But regardless, it is a huge advancement and I believe that a lot of people are going to like this update. Now, this isn't too important right now because it's still a ways away, but the new Dalgarian dungeons coming. And there's a bunch of new rooms that they are adding. Also, I don't know why Baron decides to record this. I'm not really sure this adds anything, but you know, just shocking enemy into a door to open it. I'm I don't have any issues with it. It's it's for the fun of the game, right? But I love the fact that there's new rooms that we can eventually use for loot. Now, I don't know exactly how that's gonna work just yet, but I think it's gonna be incredible. And of course, we can always just explore all the new rooms and the new doors and stuff. I'm glad that they did add new doors because, well. Yeah, I guess we can just shove them through. And of course, Baron did downplay. There's at least 14 new side rooms being added. By the time U12 does come around, I believe that there will be a bunch more. And 24 entirely new dungeon rooms. That is going to be a ton of fun and very fresh. Oh yeah, literally says freshen up the outpost. There you go, Baron. We're thinking on the same page. The outpost dungeon has 50 rooms total. That's it. Man, we need to get the modders in here making a thousand rooms. That's going to be awesome. I'm glad that there's still going to be the traditional and standard rooms, but I'm excited to see the arena rooms. Like, look at this one right here, where there's an actually an open space. There's a waterfall, or I guess a water wheel in the back. Very, very cool. And I know I was never one to do all the dungeon runs like a couple of the other YouTubers, but I do plan on doing a bunch more of them, as long as this U12 dungeon update is as cool as I think it'll be. And one thing that's incredibly cool is this new UI. So especially with all the U12 mods, I mean, just look at this. The fact that we'll be able to customize everything in the book, I think this is super cool. 
Now, I do like the original book, but at the same time, I guess this is a much more sleek and new age view of the book where we can actually customize the mods and stuff directly in game. I know for Trials of the Shinobi and a couple of my other larger mods where all of the abilities and functions are customizable, this will be incredible. This would be something great to add. And that's it guys. So expect it to be sometime, my guess, end of January, beginning of February. Don't quote me on that, but that's my thinking. Inside note, I have gone over every single one of these functions. Guys, what do you think? Let me know what you think in the comments below because there are a ton of new things being added. Personally, as somebody that loves the traditional hand-to-hand -hand comment, I'm super excited for the breakables, probably more so than anything else. The breakables, I think, is incredible. The new mod manager and being able to organize it, I think it's very, very cool, despite me not wanting to post everything on mod.io because I love the traditional Nexus mods. That's what I'm used to. And probably, it's a, it might be a little bit of a tie between the breakables and all these new arenas and side rooms. Like, just, just look at this real quick. Just look at this. I mean, this is absolutely beautiful. The scenery and how everything is done. Now, it does seem like they use the same assets for everything, so it does look pretty similar to the rest. Especially with the stones and everything in the background and the buildings right here. So I wish there were some new assets. I'm sure there will be, but just in this picture, I don't see much new stuff. But then again, everything seems like it's gonna be incredible. So let me know in the comments below what your favorite new addition to Blade and Sorcery U12 is. And one quick thing, I don't know if you guys have actually seen it, but this is mod.io for Blade and Sorcery in particular. There are a couple of mods already on here, like the Yamato, a bunch of other cool ones. Um, it does kind of stink that it only, you know, says that they're for Nomad because I do believe this mod manager will be for both versions, PC VR and for Nomad. But, you know, I, I guess it is what it is at the moment. Um, there are a lot of cool things right here. It seems like the majority of them are made by Genix. Uh, we got a couple of Italians mods. We have some Woolies in here. No, actually, it does seem like the majority of them are Genix, but it's also super easy to do this. Just a little preview. All we need to do is click on it, scroll down. You don't even need to have an account. All you need to do is click on this right here, and then just click on the download and everything will install right here. So it, it really is that easy. Now, it is cool that there's a little description that you can add. If you keep clicking through, sometimes there will be videos up in the top, so definitely make sure to check out that. But for Blade and Sorcery in particular, one thing you can look at in the future is using this guide. So it does seem like somebody made a guide for installing mods to Mac, which I didn't really know that that was a thing. I'm not really sure how many people actually use Blade and Sorcery and download the mods for Mac. But if you're one of those, let me know because I'm kind of curious to see how well that all works. If you guys like this video, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe. It helps out the channel a ton. Thanks for watching.